Hi everyone, um, and this is your Tuesday Tips with Laurie. First of all, we said that we would re read off the winners for our drawing. So if you're ready, drum roll. <laughs> this is for the Fun Fringe, the new product. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Fun Fun Fringe, which is a new product. So our Facebook winner is Shara McMurray. Woo! Awesome. Some party things going on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our, our Bellas and Fellas winner is Suzanne Reed. Yay, Suzanne! <laughs> Happy for you. Um, and our Instagram winner is Woohoo! Cool. Good job, you guys, and congratulations on winning. Make sure you email Jamie. And her name is spelled J-A-Y-M-E. And please send her your address if you'd like to have your prize. That's, that's the best way to get it. You just send her your address. All right. Thank you and congratulations to those winners. To start off with today, we're going to talk about Mylar. And it's so much fun. Um, we've heard out there is, where do I find my Mylar? There is, um, you can buy it in rolls. You can buy it in sheets. Um, this is actually vinyl that you can use to cut in your cutting machines, like the wording vinyl. You can use that as well. And so, um, com color combinations. So if you uh, are having trouble finding Mylar, contact your local quilt shop. I'm sure that they know uh, of a place. And they are best found in the shopping or in the wrapping paper section. And that's where we find found these rolls was in the wrapping paper section at a craft store. Um, but yeah, check with your local quilt store because they might be able to, they might have some in stock and they can send you in the right direction. Okay, to start with, we'll start over here. I just wanted to show you some fun co color combinations. So somebody was asking if they could use the iridescent and you can. So here is silver mylar and it's used with a white netting over the top of it and you simply use a white thread and white bobbin and it gives you that look right there and this next one right here behind it is it's a iridescent uh, like a see-through mylar with white uh, tool netting and I just used white thread and white and you can see it kind of has a kind of an opalescence shimmer to it. It's really pretty. It looks like a light bulb actually. And then the yellow, these yellow ones right here, they're made with a gold colored mylar with just a white. Again, it's great. You can make your white tool go a long ways. And what gives it the color is the orange or is the yellow thread. And make sure your top and your bottom bobbin thread match whatever you're doing. Make sure you've got the matching top and bottom bobbin. The threads match. So these green ones here were made with uh, the vinyl with the white tool again. Believe it or not, that there is white tool on there. It's just the, the green thread makes a big difference. Um, and these were made with the clear mylar with the, this light green netting. And there again, they still look very green because of the green uh, thread that we used. But I love the opalescence that the this uh, see-through or transparent mylar gives. And then red, and I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna show you how, how the red came to be as well. So I use red mylar and red. And one of the, there's several little tricks. If you stitched your placement stitch line, Use lots and lots of the Kimberbell tape. Um, layer it. So you put on your very first layer and tape the first layer. Um, don't want to, if you don't tape that first layer, it'll bunch up underneath your mylar. It will slide around. Second layer is your mylar. And again, I tape lots of tape. This is one of those projects where it's okay to use a lot of tape. And you can reuse the tape, so no worries. And then my last layer, which is the netting, again, I tape it all the way around. So there's one, there's my second piece, and then I'm gonna 
and tape it across the top part and the bottom. And okay, guys, let me just jump in real quick. If we might lose you just because that connection's poor, so if we do lose everyone, we'll jump right back on. So I just want to say that. <laughs> just okay. In case. <laughs> nope, that's great. Okay. So very well taped down. And then when you do your stitching, which I can show you here with the yellow, it doesn't slip, it doesn't slide, you don't have um, your needle catching and breaking. That's one of the reasons you want to tape it so well. You don't want the shifting, you don't want your needle breaking. Um, and then we're going to move on to cutting. So once you get that uh, first initial stitch and then you get the fill stitch all finished, this is what I like to do. You can definitely cut each layer separately like that if you want. But I like, I take the tape, and the tape is easy because it's all got to tape together. I you can see this a little bit easier. I'm tangled, sorry. Um, I like to take all three layers and I just pinch them on my fingers and I like to go around just the outside edge. It makes it really quick. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to grab all these layers. And then I'm going to trim. And I do like... Um, the duckbill scissors for that because they don't they're not grabbing and snagging your uh, snagging because you don't want to cut through the stabilizer anyway I continue then to finish cutting it makes it a little bit simpler and you've got less to work with right there when you're cutting once you've got it all cut out you put it back in the machine and you will finish your um, outside stitching your satin stitching make sure you have the, the correct um, same matching bobbin with your top thread and then I switch it over to the silver and I uh, the silver is the top edge of that light bulb right there these cute little light bulbs make sure again that you have matching top and bobbin top and bottom bobbin thread all right once that's fully stitched out generously this is my best friend I love Ray check Generously, I'm going to show you how generously. Um, you pretty much, it's a solid little uh, puddle, if you will, of fray check. There's a real good reason for that. Um, when you go to wet this down and get rid of your stabilizer, you will be happy you put a lot of fray check. Otherwise, it's not fun when you've just stitched the whole thing. So you'll generously apply the fray check. When you're done with the fray check and it's dry a little bit, but you can see I can mess with these stitches and they aren't going anywhere, which you're going to want to make sure that you have. The last thing I do is trim up a little bit closer. You don't have to trim right against it because you don't want to accidentally. If you wanted to fray check around the whole light bulb, go right for it. You're, you could do that too. The fray check, if you notice, the fray check is, this is the same color of thread. The fray check does, does look dark, but once it dries, it goes right back. So it dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, once I have it uh, trimmed down a little bit, I like to just dip it in my water over here. Um, warm water will uh, actually dissolve quicker than your cool waters, just so you know. Um, and then the great thing about the fray check, oops, when you're done with that, if you have any little threads, you can easily trim that and it won't come undone with the fray check. I can even show you on the fray check. Um, you can trim that just like that and then you See that? And I can pull at those threads and they don't come undone. So fray check, your friend, it's your best friend. <laughs> Another tip that I was given was if you take a plastic canvas, these meshed canvas, and you fold it in half to make an envelope and just, you can stitch it down the sides and then this is a tool that you have that you can reuse several times. 
Um, then you can put as many of these in here as you want. You can either dip them in water or run them under, uh, run them under uh, running water, like just in your faucet, and shake, spread them out. And there you have it. And I'll show you, these aren't uh, dipped in water yet. But look how fun, I just love all these beautiful colors. They're just so fun. So if you have any tips of your own that you'd like to share with your Mylar and you've, or if you've had something that you said, oh, make sure you don't do that, great. Would you please uh, comment below and we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Uh, and we'll tune in next week for another fun Tuesday Tips with Laurie. Thank you.